Um, but President Eisenhower also uh, em empowered the CIA to f become a military or a paramilitary organization engaged in secret wars, funding covert operations. W what does that do to an intelligence agency and, and the production of intelligence? Well, I what I don't think is properly understood is when you get into covert action, and it was Eisenhower who took us in the direction of covert action in 1953 with the overthrow of a democratically elected government in Iran, covert action is policy. It is policy in support of the White House. All of the covert actions are directed or endorsed or conceptualized uh, at the White House. And when you have intelligence that relates to covert action, it has a policy spin on it. So I think you have an insidious process where the collection is devoted to clandestine operations and it has a policy orientation because of the role of covert action. So already you've tainted the intelligence, which is why I think you have to separate intelligence and intelligence analysis from clandestine collection and covert action. They, took, they should be two separate agencies. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you've uh, been critical of the politicization of intelligence. Can, tell, is, is this what you mean by the politicization that is involved in policy? Well, when I talk about politicization, I'm talking about the effort of an internal directed politicization or an external uh, directed politicization. And that is putting a spin on the intelligence to have it support a particular policy. So when you look at the 1980s and the role that William Casey and Robert Gates played in trying to portray the Soviet Union as 10 feet tall, even though they were in the process of collapse, in order to support an unprecedentedly large peacetime defense budget by Ronald Reagan, you started to get a policy spin uh, on the intelligence. And of course, the worst example is when you go to war, such as the Iraq War, the estimate that was done on weapons of mass destruction, which didn't exist, and that was totally politicized intelligence, the kind of intelligence that Bush wanted and Vice President Cheney wanted. And the CIA played a heavy role in helping to politicize that intelligence. Um, and you also talk about a 1991 defense policy guidance that was written by Dick Cheney and Paul Wolfowitz and Scooter Libby uh, that recommended a unilateralist U.S. foreign policy. And you say that that reversed a bipartisan policy uh, of moderation and multilateralism that had been in place since World War II. What was the effect of, of that document and how it's changed our foreign policy? Well, the document itself uh, was written in the Pentagon, and it was not only Dick Cheney, the Secretary of Defense, but it was some of the same characters who brought you the Iraq War in 2003. Uh, Paul Wolfowitz, Scooter Libby, Douglas Fife. Uh, and the emphasis was on the United States basically going it alone. Uh, the United States never allowing another single actor or a group of nations to combine to, to be uh, in an adversarial situation with regard to the United States. Uh, it even legitimized the use of nuclear weapons against non-nuclear powers, which was a repudiation of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty from 1969. Fortunately, General Scowcroft, who was National Security Advisor, was opposed to the policy, and Senator Joe Biden in the Foreign Relations Committee, after it was leaked, to the Los Angeles Time, put a lid on it. But these same characters came back into Washington with the Bush administration uh, in the year 2000. And this is really the, uh, the key document, the key paper to support neoconservative uh, thinking, which got us into Iraq and which destroyed arms control and took us down the road of national missile defense mm -hmm. and repudiating the anti-ballistic missile treaty. Tremendous harm was done to American national security policy with unilateral thinking, which was part of American exceptionalism, part of American triumphalism, part of the feeling that we won the Cold War and we're never going to allow another Cold War uh, to confront us again.